shoe and kernel. We're going to finish this foot that we started with the wedge pad. We've got a fantastic horse handler here, Morgan. You like holding horses? We always help you dad quite a bit. Okay. Well, what I wanted to do is just finish driving nails in this hoof and then go through the process of flinching. Um, many ways to do this. I'll show you the way that is effective for me um, and that I learned from my dad. All right. So, probably a better habits than holding nails in your mouth. That's what I've always done. I know there's magnets. There's all sorts of things to use. Um, I've just found this the most efficient way. And, uh, you know, when it comes to shoeing a horse, just do what's efficient, what works for you. You'll find what's comfortable. All right. Good. These are nails that I've already prior driven. Uh, this was a nail here that was helping to hold the pad in place. Typically I, on a front foot I do three nails per side. Often I will set heel nails, but that allows me the option to use toe nails. On this, you'll, on Colonel, you'll see we've got plenty of room to nail in the heel, so I'm not worried about quicking him or getting a hot nail. Again, I'm going to aim with my finger where I want the nail to come out. You'll notice that there is a specific side to the nail, and we'll go over that, but the indication on the nail goes to the inside. The flat side goes to the outside of the hoof. I'll aim where I want the nail to come out. I'll point the nail at my finger. A couple taps to get it started through the, sh the pad. Now I'm into the hoof. There, I felt it catch the hoof wall. And if you look real close, that nail is already starting to protrude. I'll finish driving the nail. And you've seen in one motion, I bend the nail over. It allows me to catch it with the claw and wring it off. I'll do the same on the other side. I'm going to aim with my finger where I want the nail to come out at. I'm going to point. Now I'm going to swap. I can feel the other nails. I'm going to go just forward the same distance as this, as the spacing between the quarter nail and toe nail. Through the pad, I feel it into the hoof. Caught the hoof wall. Now I'm driving. I always thought a nail gun would be efficient for shoeing a horse, but I think it's just too intricate. Too much uh, things that can go wrong if you were to just shoot a nail. You have to be cautious. You notice every time I'm driving that hammer, I've got a feeling what the hammer's doing and what the nail's doing. A nail gun would be nice. I just don't know if we'll ever get to that point uh, with shooting horses. I think uh, we would end up quicking and having too many hot nails if that was the case. Ironically, a lot like a block of wood, the hoof also has hard spots in the hoof. And just like a nail from a framing hammer, you can shoot it and catch a hard spot and go a uh, direction you don't want it to. Same thing with a nail through a hoof. It too can catch a hard spot and go where you don't want it to. So you need to be real cautious when you're driving your nails. And notice I, hate, I use consistent blows when driving nails. I'm not quick or erratic. I'm going to find where I want the nail with this finger. I'm going to aim. There is a slight twist to the nail. It's not perfectly in line with the rim. There's a slight twist. I'm going to set. I'm going to adjust here for a second for Colonel. He's about done with the video. There. I felt the catch the hoof wall. And I can just tell that that's going to drive from experience that that's going to drive a little deep. Now, you can try and save that nail. If the nail has bent in any form or fashion, start new. So I'm going to use a new nail. I'm going to put a slight crease right on the tip. And this is to the outside. This is on the flat side of the nail. I'm going to go back in the same nail hole. And what that little crease does is it allows that nail to catch on the hoof wall sooner. 
and drive through the hook wall. There you go. I felt that catch the hook wall where the other one had not yet. Couple drives. The nail's through. Now I can ring it off. Still slightly higher than what I had wanted. And bend that one over. And what I'd wanted, but that's where we ended up. Now, real quick, an important part of the process. This is probably one of the most important things for setting a shoe and having a good set, is blocking your nail. Lots of ways to do this. Uh, I like to tap on the inside of the nail. Nail head, it seems to take some of the sting out of tapping. Oh, oh. Were you done? Okay, I'll hurry through this because I think kernel's just about done. And I'll demonstrate blocking these nails. All right, start at the toe, under the nail, to the heel. You see that nail loosened up a little bit? I'm going to come back to it, and I'm good. Sometimes I like to double check, but we start at the toe, work to the heel. Each time I'm underneath the nails. Now I'll show you a trick the old timers did. If you don't happen to have a block, really no problem. I watched my dad shoot like this for many years. Sometimes he still does in a pinch. Take the edge of your nippers, your pull-offs, whatever you got. Hold it under the nail. And that blocks the nail. Perhaps in another video we'll get a close-up shot that shows you the actual bend of the nail. But when you block that nail, as the nail comes out of the hoof wall, it sets the nail, tightens the shoe to the hoof, and starts the bend for your clinch. More to come.